Episode 5, Who is Ham? Ham is one of the sons of Noah. He had three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japhet. Ham had four sons, Cush, which is Ethiopia, Mishterim, which is Egypt, Put, which is Libya, and Canaan, which is Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Jordan area. Now, we learned last episode that there were these garments from Adam and Eve that Ham gave to his son Cush and that Cush gave to his his son Nimrod. Now these garments were from Adam and Eve. They basically disobeyed God in, in, in the Garden of Eden and they ate of the forbidden tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And so they were basically banned from the Garden of Eden. And so these garments are here and they're being passed on from generation to generation per the book of Jasher 7. And so we see that Nimrod had put on these garments and he became a, a fierce hunter and he began to build things and really become a powerful figure in the actual nation of Ham. And of course we know Ham is known as Africa or the actual original name is Alcobula. Alcobula was the original name of, of, of Africa before the Europeans changed it to to Africa. And so we learned that in the Garden of Eden, Eve was talking to a fallen angel. And we went to the book of Enoch 69, and basically they listed the 21 or so angels. Then they listed the chiefs of these angels. And these chiefs were crucial in their assignments on earth. And we know there's there's a Lucifer, they called him Satan, they called him the devil. But Lucifer is a fallen angel, just like these chiefs that Enoch named in the book of Enoch. 69. Yakon the rebel, his total job was to lead astray the offspring of men, which was whatever God said, do just the opposite. Kisabel, his assignment was to corrupt their bodies by generating mankind, which is going in and land with the daughters of, of men and, and having children. Enoch 9 talks about one of the fallen angels that was under Kisabel, and his name was Simeaza. Simeaza taught sorcery. They have gone together to the daughters of men and have lain with them and have become polluted and have revealed their sins to them. The women have brought forth giants. Thus has the whole earth have been filled with blood and with iniquity. This is Kisabel. His assignment was to lay with the daughters of earth and have children. It's very important to identify what do these offsprings look like. They were giants, one. And as we go out through our study, we will see also when these giants were having relations with the daughters on earth, they were not just you know producing large giants, but they were also producing a people a lighter pigmentation. There was also a a grasp understanding of knowledge and wisdom developing uh, when you see things that were being built. Like for Nimrod, you see how he was able to to build this city with his entire family of Ham, and he built this city with you know Cush, with Egypt, Mishterim, with Put, and with Canaan. He got all of his family together all of the lineage of Ham and they helped build this city of, of Babylon of Babel and in this city they built this tower and this tower was being built to reach the sky so they can actually you know dethrone the creator of heaven and earth to take God off of his throne and put their God up there to put Nimrod up on that throne they were literally shooting arrows up into the sky trying to destroy God Almighty the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were able to do these things because of the knowledge, because of the wisdom that was given by these fallen angels. Gadrel, you know, Gadrel is the one that seduced Eve. Gadrel discovered every stroke of death to the children of men. So think about the many ways that we die here on earth, whether it's gun violence, whether it's drugs, whether it's wars, whatever it is, this particular uh, chief angel, Gadrel, who seduced Eve, is responsible for every single stroke of death, every instrument of death to the children of men. Again, weapons mass destructions. This is what Gadrol's assignment was and he had angels underneath him to do his bidding, to do the assignments of evil. Punamua, he discovered the children of men 
bitterness and sweetness, which is depression, anxiety. And the flip side of that is indulgence. You know, what's sweet? What do you love? Just go ahead and do it. it there's no limits. Just whatever. You can have an addiction. You can, if it's sweet to you, if you love it, just do it. And these are the things that, you know, Putima's assignment was, is to get people from one end of the spectrum to the other, depressed or overly, you know, excited and happy to do something that's, that again, that's not of, it's not of, that's not of God. Putamia also pointed out every secret of their wisdom. He taught men to understand writing, ink, and paper. And so think about what these angels and these chief's angels assignments were as you read scripture, as you look around you to see the matter of evil in our nation and around the world. There are fallen angels with assignments to produce certain evils in the land and this was happening and Enoch was writing down all of this which was which was such a blessing because we can understand now what we're dealing with we can strategically pray and know how to cover our families and our nations properly it says numerous have gone astray from every period of the world even to this day for men were not born for this thus with pen and ink to confirm their belief. So with pen and ink, we can write down, they can write down everything that's that's opposite of what God wants. And so they, they're able to write down things that are that are incorrect, things that are uh, against God, and able to share this with other people and also teach them this is not what God wanted. Since they were not created for that, like the angels, they were to remain righteous and pure. And that's why God did not want Adam and Eve to touch of that the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He, he said, no, don't do it. He said, nor would death, which destroys everything, would have affected us if we had not, if Eve and if Adam and Eve had not eaten of that tree. But by this knowledge, they perish. And by this also power consumes. In every country, there's this issue with power. Men wanting to lead, wanting to to consume um, the whole world with their authority. These angels, this is their assignments. This is what they were strategically assigned to do. Kas Yadeh, he discovered to the children of men every wicked stroke of spirits and of devils. The stroke to the embryo in the womb to make sure that we are barren. Those who, who love God and those who serve God have a hard time you know, bearing children. This is his assignment, is to cause agitation, fibroids, uh, endometriosis, whatever it is, cause these agitations. And we're thinking like, what's going on? Why are so many women having you know, fertility issues? There is an actual fallen angel, a chief, and his assignment is to sh the stroke to the embryo in the womb to diminish birth, whether it's through abortion or whether it's through just not being able to, to bear children. And then Casbell, he's another chief, and his principal uh, assignment was to tell everybody about the oath, the oath, you know, the, the, the secrets of heaven, uh, the secrets of the cycles of the earth. These things that were never meant for man to know. He, God did not want us to know about his, his oath, his secrets of how he created the heavens and the earth and how the cycles of the earth work. That was never God's intentions for us to do. Enoch 9 and 5 says, you have seen what Azazel, Azazel is, is a fallen angel under this particular chief Casbell has done. He has taught every species of, of iniquity upon earth and has to close to the world all the secret things which are done in the heavens. Azazel, under Casbell, the chief, this is what their assignments, is to let people know all the different secrets of heaven. And so you're thinking, okay, how does he know that? How is he so smart? Well, what they did not tell us was these fallen angels, these chiefs, they told us these things, which again, God did not. He never wanted us, he never wanted us to know. And so now we go back to the descendants of Ham. We see Nimrod, you know, he is again a prolific hunter. He he knows a lot about war and he's able to fight and win battle after battle after battle. He was just he was an extraordinary individual and of course as we mentioned before he grave he he, uh, he became famous and they saw him as a king, not just as a king but as a god. They they called him King Nimrod. And so he was able to, again, get Cush, get uh, Egypt, get Put, get Canaan, all the descendants, all the families, their all the baby mamas, to come together to build 
the city of Babel, to, to build the city of Babylon and to build a tower to the heavens. Jubilees 10 says that it took them 43 years to build this tower. And so we're thinking, how in the world did they comprehend or know how to cut bricks and to to uh, to make sure that you know you had the right length and and how to get the clay and put the bricks together they learned from the fallen angels that's why it's important to understand the chief angels and what their response what their responsibilities were on earth which is totally against anti-god totally whatever god said again do the opposite and so here Nimrod is building this and he's building this with the wisdom that the fallen angels has given to them and, and, and let's not forget he's wearing the garments that Adam and Eve had on when they were kicked out of the garden so Nimrod secured the entire earth they were all under his control remember at that time Nimrod heard that Terah was having a son and we know that son is Abram which got you know changed his name to Abraham and we'll have to go into more details as to why because you see Abraham you know Terah was living in all of this all of this that was going on on earth because it said everybody was pretty much affected by what Nimrod was doing everyone was pretty much kind of scared of him and whatever he wanted he got so you have Japheth out there you know he you know we, we, we talked about how he went and had war with the children of Japheth and took their children and used their children as his servants so you had Japheth out there you have the sham out there and so you have Terah Terah's there and he gets wind that okay actually he doesn't get wind God was like hey you need to protect your son and so they did a switcheroo they put another another son in the place uh, for Nimrod to destroy and to kill because he wanted to kill Abram because he knew that child was going to be special that God was going to use Abram so pretty much everybody was affected by the things of the fallen angels and Nimrod was running the show and for 43 years he was building this tower of Babel and not just the tower of Babel but the city he was building this huge city and in Jubilees 10 it says that it was 5,433 cubits and two palms that in feet is 8,150 feet which is 1.6 miles high that's enormous that is bigger than anything you can ever imagine the World Trade Center is the largest, tallest building in the United States. It's 1,776 feet. The tallest building in the entire world is in Dubai, which is Burj Khalifa, which is 2,722 feet high. These people, Nimrod and the descendants of Ham, built a tower the Tower of Babel was three times as tall as the Dubai tallest building and over four times higher than the World Trade Center. They built this thousands of years ago. So when they tell you there is no way that the Europeans, Japheth, could have built these large ships to transport the tribe of Judah throughout the entire world, tell them yes could be done they built a tower that's four times bigger taller than the world trade center and three times taller than the Bira khalifa in dubai it could be done those slave ships were built and they transported us across the world it was done so nimrod here has this knowledge and he's able to get his entire family to build and to construct these things but just what they did after they built it it was it was just to to just blaspheme against God to, to just defile who he is defile his name defile his character I mean who in their right mind would think you can actually build a tower all the way to heaven and take off God and put Nimrod to put Nimrod on the throne it's really sick but this is what the fallen angels were were doing helping helping our people helping the people with all manner of evil that scripture that says there's nothing new under the sun that's true there's absolutely nothing nothing new under the sun and so it makes sense now why God told Abraham hey when he got bigger he says you need to get up out of there leave your mama leave your daddy leave all your kinsmen take your wife and get out of there I will take you to land I will bless you but you have to leave and so Abraham again it seems like every time there's 
a lot of dissension there's a lot of iniquity and sin there's always a ram in the bush and abraham was that ram and that's why it was so important for him to to get out of there and to leave his father because his father was infected by all that was going on as well all manner of evil was affecting everybody that's what they that's kind of what they knew and so abraham was protected from nimrod and he was able of course to grow up and god used him mightily and um, of course abraham had a difficult time bearing children again that chief angel uh-huh stroking the embryo sarah had a heart he remember he married sarah sarah had a difficult time uh, having children and it took her forever forever to to get pregnant see what's happening these fallen angels yes we know that the, the flood came to destroy the entire earth and in that destruction of the entire earth it was the giants and so people were saying well uh, if, if they destroyed the giants then they destroyed the angels but not so because you see the angels, you see that you know, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to call him, is still doing his thing. We still see the ramifications of these, these chiefs and what they were doing back in Enoch's day. We see that now, even clearly. So there's debate about whether you know uh, all of the fallen angels were, were destroyed, but it's kind of impossible because you still have Lucifer that's still running around doing his bidding. And also there are scriptures, Enoch 100, in those days the angel shall descend into the places of concealment and gather together in one spot all that have assisted in crime. Again, Enoch 101. In those days the angel shall descend into places of concealment and gather together in one spot all that have assisted in crime. And that day shall Yah rise up to execute the great judgment upon all sinners and to commit the guardianship of all the righteous and holy to the holy angels, that they may protect them as the apple of an eye until every evil and every crime be annihilated. Whether or not the righteous sleep securely, wise men shall then truly perceive and the sons of the earth shall understand every word of the sefer, knowing that their riches cannot save them in the ruin of their crimes. Woe to you sinners, when you shall be afflicted on account of the righteous in the day of great trouble, shall be burnt in the fire, and be recompensed according to your deeds. Woe to you, perverted in heart, who are watchful to obtain an accurate knowledge of evil and to discover terrors. No one shall assist you. Woe to you sinners, for with the words of your mouths and with the work of your hands have you acted impiously in the flame of a blazing fire shall you be burnt. So Enoch 100 is telling us that the second, the, the judgment where, you know, those that are wicked and evil will be thrown into hell, he's telling us that these angels will be put in one and will be concealed and put in one place and will be judged, uh, not necessarily judged, but they will be condemned to hell. So scriptures and just as we read through the scriptures, as we begin to study the different the different sons, sons of Noah, you will see that the ramifications and the identifications of the fallen angels, you will see this throughout scripture. So they possibly could not have all died during the flood because here Enoch 100 he says he's going to get those angels their assignments what they've been doing the crimes they've committed and they're going to be condemned to hell so there we're still dealing with these fallen angels we're still having to to contend with them and see and if you look around you you can it's pretty obvious you can see that these fallen angels and their assignments are very clear and they are still doing their evil and their wickedness in in the earth abraham he married sarah and again she had a hard time bearing children and so sarah of course wanted to help him out you know she was like i can't have kids and you need to we need an heir so she told her her maid her maid to go into uh, abraham and to to get pregnant and have a child it's very important to look at this scripture because abraham went in to Hagar, the maid who was an Egyptian. Egyptian, so she was a part of the descendants of Ham. So she, of course, goes in and we know the story. She gets pregnant and she names the baby Ishmael. Now in Jasher 21, it talks about that one day Sarah was, you know, just around the house and the boys were out playing. 
And Jasher, Jasher 21 says that Sarah actually saw Ishmael get a bow and arrow and try to kill Isaac, which is why she went to Abraham and said, hey, you, you have to get him out of here. I'm sorry. I know that's your son. You love him. But Hagar and Ishmael has to. To go reading scripture, seeing the different nations, you're seeing, you're seeing the nation of Shem, you're seeing the nation of Ham, and you're seeing the nation of Japheth. And so Abraham was like, yeah, you're right. I got to get them out of here. I got to get them out of here. And still today, you have the sins of Ishmael and the descendants of Jacob still not getting along, still having issues with one another. Because just because we're all a particular skin color, does not mean that we're all the same. We have different goals, we have different missions, and we also have different gods. And that's important to understand when you read in the scripture that there were different gods that the people were serving. And it's very important to really always focus, okay, who were they serving? Were they serving um, Baal? Were they serving Babel? Were they serving Pharaoh? Or were they serving God? Just because everyone is black does not mean that we're all the same. We're not. Look at where their hearts are. Look at who they're serving. They're beautiful in every single way. But where is their heart? Who are, their, who are they pledging their allegiance to? And so Abraham was taken from Tare. He had to leave his country because his allegiance was to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't want any parts of what Nimrod and the descendants uh, of, of Ham were doing at that time, how the whole world was basically, you know, cultivated to, to Nimrod. He, 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 he was like, no, and Tara was a part of that. And he was like, nope, I can't have you part, a part of that. And we even know the story that, you know, when Abraham was traveling, he had informed the Egyptians that his wife, Sarah, was his sister because she was so pretty and he didn't want them to take her. And they, they did take her. And of course, Pharaoh, again, from the, from Egypt, you know, tried to touch her uh, or wanted to touch her, but got sent a plague. And so Pharaoh's like, wait a minute, what's going on? He went back to, uh, to Abraham. He says, what are you doing? There's what your God has, has, has put, has put a, a, a ailment on me. What, what are you doing? And he says, that's my wife. And it's like, well, why didn't you tell me that was your wife? You know, why, why did you, why didn't you tell me the truth? So Abraham left out of Egypt with his wife and all that he had with his nephew Lot. Again, you're seeing the different nations. You're seeing what they're part of. You're seeing who their gods are or who they're serving as their God, which is very, very important. And as you read throughout scripture, there's there always seem to be, seems to be the Israelites and a Pharaoh or an Egyptian, you know, fighting, fighting against one another, Egypt putting the Israelites in bondage. This is Ham putting Sham in bondage. But not all of the pharaohs of the uh, Egyptians were bad. Remember Joseph. You know, Joseph basically found, found favor with one of uh, the pharaohs um, during his time. And there was a famine in the land. And um, with the wisdom that Joseph had, he was able to tell the king what God had shared with him. And the king said, okay, whatever your God says, we're going to do it. We're going to obey because you know a famine is coming, and so we need to prepare. And so Joseph was able to prepare, and then we know the story how you know Joseph's uh, brothers come and they come to they come to Egypt because they need help. Their their father is, is 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 much older now, and he needs food, and they're coming at their their last their their last beck and call for some help. And of course, you know Joseph is there, and he sees them and he notices them. In, in Genesis. 43 and 32, it says, and they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians, which did not eat with him by themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. So Joseph had to make sure that none of his men were part of that, that setting when he had his brothers sit down and he fed them because the Egyptians law is, is that it's, it's, it's forbidden. You're not to eat with a Hebrew with an Israelite. Again, you're seeing the two nations and how they were formed from the beginning, which makes sense as to, okay, these are the same people that sold us to Japheth. It's 
it's, it's here, it's scripture. You, you cannot refute scripture. This is, a, this is the Bible. And so as you read the scriptures, you're able to, to clearly see, okay, there's three different nations. You have the descendants of Sham, the descendants of Ham, and the descendants of Japheth, which we'll get to sooner rather than later. In Isaiah 14, there's a prophecy that takes place. And the prophecy basically informs us. It says that, hey, Jacob, <laughs> Again, what you've been going through, what you have experienced, God is going to vindicate you. Isaiah 14, and y'all will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. They shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And it shall come to pass in that day that y'all shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. He's talking to to Jacob. He's talking to the Israelites. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, against the king of Babel, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Yah had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. Remember the stroke we talked about? with the fallen angels, how they were stroking the embryos and stroking people with all manner of evil. This is in the prophecy. He that ruled the, the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no fellow has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirred up the dead for thee. And this dead here in the Hebrew lexicon means giants. This giants, old race of giants. These are the offsprings of the fallen angels and the son, and, and the men, the children, uh, children, the men on earth. He stirred up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, the chief ones. I believe here he's talking about the chief fallen angels of the earth and have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this weaken the nations? So, this is judgment coming just in Enoch 100. That judgment is going to come to everyone that did Jacob, Israel wrong, period. Now, you can repent and ask the Most High to forgive you of your, of your sins and accept Yeshua into your heart. Uh, accept what he did on the tree, his, his, his sacrifice for our sins. And you can be engrafted in. But woe to those who have committed these crimes. Woe to these fallen angels. Woe to Lucifer. Call him Satan or the devil. Woe to these, these, uh, these fallen angels and those who have, who have uh, who've entertained these angels. Now representing these angels in the earth and doing all manner of evil to, 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 to people on, on the earth. And so Isaiah 14 is another prophecy to the children of Israel saying to us, hey Israelites, it's been tough. You've been captives, but I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to bring you back to myself. And I'm going to get everyone and everybody that has messed with you. Again, these are the descendants of Ham. These are the scriptures that we're combing through to see exactly who is Cush. We know Cush, Nimrod, that's huge. Egypt, Pharaoh. And we'll continue with, with Put and with Canaan. And you'll begin to see the different nations that have been formed since thousands of years ago. But again, we serve a God that loves us. And it's time for us to understand the truth of who we are, that we are the chosen people of the Most High, and that there have been people with assignments, with the help of fallen angels, to destroy us. But that's why he scattered us. That's why God scattered us because they can't get us. If you, they can't, you know, if we're all scattered everywhere, they can't get us all at one time. And no matter what they have tried to do to us, they still have failed to destroy Judah. They have still failed to destroy the children of the Israelites. As we seek truth, please seek truth with us. If you have questions or comments, email us at info at truthwars.com. We don't claim to know everything, but we do serve and love the God who knows everything. So let truth war, let truth reign, let truth speak, 
and let truth set you free finally.